Hi, welcome to the pre-calculus lecture series. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, section 2.4, and uh, the topic is the average rate of change of a function. And uh, this section is a pretty important concept. The reason why I say it is because, you know, like when you go to the calculus, and the way we define the, you know, the derivative is the rate of the change, right? So the derivative we defined as the instantaneous rate of the change. But how do we get the instantaneous rate of the change? That we first need to know what is the average rate of the change of a function so here. So that's why in this video we're going to talk about the average rate change of a function so here. Okay, so now I'm going to go to our lecture notes so we can start. Okay, so we're going to talk about what is the average rate, right? So let's try to write down some definitions here. So we say the average rate of the change of a function like f of x between x equal to a and x equal to b is defined as So these definitions here, so it's kind of like it's a pretty easy to understand to define. So this is what we call this the average rate of the change. So we change, we said this is really, it's the change in y over change in what? Change in x here. All right, so the change in y and uh, this one's here. Let me try to um, do a graph here, right? So here, let's take a look here. Okay, so if my function here, I have a function go like this, okay? Okay, so the change in x or change in y. So let me see if you have x uh, is in here. I have x value see here. So this is my a value. I have x value here. This is my b value here, right? So I know the a, you will get a what? A function value of a what? f of a. So the same for b, what you have, you're going to have a function value of f of the b's here. So that's why we say it's a change in y because y value is from f of a change to f of the b. So we say this is f of the b minus f of the a. And then, so like in here, so that means from a, you know, from the x is from a to b. So this is minus b over the b minus a here, right? So the average rate of the change is here. So if you, okay, so let's take a look here, right? So these two points, right? So if you go to connect, we know every time you have a two points, you can get a lines, right? So let's take a look. So for this function, if I connect these two points, what I have here, I have a second line here, right? So this line we call is the second, okay? So the second line is the one they touch at the two points, right? One is here, one point is here. And then like in the algebra, one of the most famous formula is the slope formula, which says rise over wrong. So that means here, if you put this one here, right? So if you put it like this, uh, okay? So the difference is here, right? So if you take a look at this one here, this is a what? This is a how much is rise, right? So this is a how much is rise. 
and uh, what is here this is uh, how much is wrong right so this is uh, what we call is wrongs right so this is rise of the wrongs here so the average rate so the average rate of the change is here right so the average rate of the change really you know so it's kind of from the here to here and here to here so now basically what is the average rate of the changes here really is what so this is the slope what type of the slope so the average rate of change is the slope of a what of a second line correct Okay, so it's a slope of the second line here. The reason why we said this is a very, very important concept for the calculus, because in the calculus, we said the calculus, the first part in the calculus, we talk about the derivatives, right? So the, the derivative really is just the slope of the tangent lines, right? So we know the tangent line is only touched the curve in one point, but the second line is touch the curve in two points. And the, we can approach the slope of the tangent line by moving these two points and getting closer and closer together. That's why we talk about it in the pre-cal is what is the slope of the second lines here. So then when you go into the calculus, then you'll be able to use the slope of the second line and try to approximate the slope of the tangent lines here. All right, so that what is the average rate of the change? So let's take a look at a few very easy problems here. So like for the first ones here, if the f of x is equal to x minus three, so what is the average rate of the change? You can say, okay, f of the three is you just plug the three, right? So it's a three minus three, the square, what is here? It's zeros, right? Okay, and then what is f of one here? f of one, that means you plug the one in there. So this is one minus three to the square. What is here? It's a four. So the average rate of the change, right? So average rate, okay, so, okay, so average rate of the change is here. So it will be equal to what? So the f three, so it's zero minus f one. So it's a minus four, right? Then over x2 minus x1. So it's a what? It's a three minus one. So this one will be equal to what? It's a negative two here, right? So that's what is so we call this average rate of the chain. So for here, let's do the same things here. So it's f of the seven. So the seven, that means you plug in the x equal to seven, right? So it's a seven minus three square. So what is here is a 16, right? Now you have f of four. So the four is a four minus three squared is one. So what is the average rate of the changes here? I, I put ARC, so, so abbreviations, the average rate of change. So it's f seven minus f four over seven minus four, right? So it's a 15 over what is three. So the average rate of change is five here. Okay, so let's take a look at another one here, right? So the another one, let's say an object is dropping from a cliff and uh, the distance, uh, the distance is the fall after the, you know, the t seconds is this formula here. Find that the average speed, okay, the speed over the, uh, following intervals here. Okay, so now let's take a look at the speed, right? So the, so the, if you remember, what is the speed? The speed is the distance over time, right? So the average speed will just be the average distance over time, right? So let's here, so let's say here for the D5, so if you have five seconds, how how much it will fall here? So it will be 16 times the phi to the what square. So what is this one here? This is a 400, right? Then what is the D1 here? D1 is just a 16 times one to the square. 
what is here is the sixteenth here. So what is the average speed? So speed is the distance over time, right? So average speed will be what? So the distance is from 400 and uh, to the 16, and over how many min, how many seconds here? Over four, right? So it's a five minus one equal to four. So what is here? So it's 96 feet per second here. So that means that the average speed of this object is going to drop 96 feet per second here. Okay. So now let's take a look. So what happened to the now? Remember, you know, in the previous lecture, we said that this is kind of like a very important, like the notation, like a T. So let's say from the T equal to A to the T to A plus H. Now, what is the average speed, all right? So let's take a look here. So the D, A is here, will just be what? 16 A squared, right? Okay. Now D, the A plus H, do you guys still remember what we did before? It will be 16, then the A plus H squares, right? Okay, so now what do you need to do here? Now you FOIL it, right? So the A plus H squares, A squared plus 2AH plus H squared. Am I right? Okay, so now, you know, the average speed, the average speed are going to be D to A plus H. So it's 16 A squared plus 2AH plus H squared minus 16 A squared. So what is the button here? The button will be this time minus this time, right? So it's A plus H minus A. Okay, now let's take a look at what we have here. So distributive property, so you can get a 16 A squared plus 32 A H plus 16 H squared minus 16 A squared. So what is the button you have? The button you have for what is the H's here, right? Okay, so now to see we can cancel anything. Okay, oh, this is pretty good. I can cancel the A square. Then in here, oh, I can factor out the 16 and the H's here. So the top here will be, I can factor the 16, I can factor the H out. So what is the here? So this is a 2A in the first ones, right? So now what happened here? You factor one H out, so still have H's here. Okay, good. And then in here, oh, the H and H cancel. So what is my final answers here? The final answers here will be 16, the 2A plus H here. Okay, all right. So that's, uh, that's the practice of how to find the, you know, the, the rate or average rate of changes here. Okay, so the, then the next thing here, we're going to talk about the average rate of change versus function is increasing or decreasing here, okay? Okay, so in here, let's try to take a look at uh, the examples here, right? So. Okay, so this is my x, y. Let's assume this is my functions, right? So this is f of x function. Obviously, what is the f of x function is? Is increasing or decreasing? So I know f of x is a what? Is increasing, right? Like every time the bar you get a bigger and the bigger. Now let's take a look at the rate of the change to see what happens here. So the rate of the change is here. So let's say here, this is A, this is B, right? So we know the rate of the change is the slope of what? We know the rate of change is slope of the second line. So that means it's, uh, you connect these two points you get a line here, right? So this is the second line here. And uh, this line is go upward. 
So I know what happened to the slope here if the lines go up, the slope is positive or negative? Slope is a positive, correct? And we know the slope of the second line is the average rate of the change. So what do we say here? So we say if f of x is increase, right? Then the average rate of change, right, is what? Is a positive, correct? Right, so the last means we know the average rate of the change will be positive because we know this is the second lines, right? So we know the rate of the change is the second lines here. So now let's take a look here. So if I have a, a function here, let's see the functions go like this, all right? So this is my f of x functions here. And then now let's take a look at the rate of the change from A to B is here. So if this is A, so I have a, and this is a B is here, okay? So remember, right, so the rate of the change is the slope of the second lines here. So now we kind of graph these lines here, right? So this is my second lines here, right? So this is the second line. So what happened to the slope here? The slope is what? Because these lines are going down. So what happens here? The slope is what? The slope is a negative, right? Okay. So the slope is negative. So we can conclude in here. So if f of x is decreasing, okay, then I know the average rate of a change is a what? Is a negative. All right. So that's why we need to be careful. So the neg so is increasing and the decreasing. They're going to determine, uh, you know, the you know the the rate of the changes here, and the, be very careful here. The backward doesn't work. What I mean, the backward doesn't work. That means if the average rate of the change is negative, this doesn't mean the function is always decreasing, all right? So the, we say the, you know, that it's a go backward. So if the, so like I mean, say, if the average rate is negative, for example, does not, uh, always does not always applied f of x is decreasing right so that's that's the you know doesn't mean that it's always decreasing so for example here if you have a quadratic here right so if this is your function if you want to find the rate of the change between these two points Right, so if you want to find the rate of change between these two points, you got a negative, but then the quadratic function is not a decreasing function. They decreasing on certain portion and then increasing in certain portions here. So this is a very important concept. So make sure, you know, if a function is increasing, then I know the rate of change is positive. If a function is decreasing, then I know the rate of change is negative. But if you go backward, it does not apply, it does not always apply. Here. Okay, so now this one's here, right? So it's very important concept also. So let's take a look, you know, the take a look at what is the uh, examples that give you f of x, right? So this is the y equal to 3x minus 5. So what type of the function is this one? This is we call this a linear function, right? because it is a line here, right? Okay, so now let's take a look at the rate of the change, the average rate of the change. So here, the first one is here, from the x0 to x1. So f of one is equal to three minus five, right? So what is here? Negative two. Then the f of zero, what is here? Is negative five, right? 
So then the average rate of change is equal to what? Is equal to negative two minus negative five over what? Over one minus zero. So what is here is three, all right? And the B's here, let's take a look. F of the seven. Okay, seven is three times seven minus five. What is here? 16. Then F of the three. What is F of the threes here? Is three times three minus five. So it's nine minus five is a four. Now I find that the average rate of the change is equal to what? 16 minus four over seven minus three. So what is here is 12 over four is three. Oh boy, huh, did you see something? Oh, well, this three, this is three is here, all right? So the, now let's take a look here. The other ones here, the last ones here. So in here we say X equal to the, for any numbers here, right? Okay, so we do this again, right? So let's take a look at f of a. So right now you should be very good at of this general notations, right? So this is a 3a minus 5. Then this is f of what? a plus h. Okay, so it will be equal to the 3a plus h minus 5. Okay, so now the average rate of the change is equal to f of the a plus h minus f of the a. Now what is the bottom here is a plus h minus a, right? Okay, so you should be very good at this right now. So this is three, the a plus h minus five minus three a minus five, right? So it's a plus h. So a plus h minus a is what? Just be a, right? Okay, so distributive property, so it's a 3a plus 3h minus 5. Be, be careful about those uh, parentheses, minus 3a plus 5 over h. Okay, let's take a look. Can we cancel out something? Oh, good, 3a, 3a, I can cancel. Ah, negative 5, 5, I can cancel. So what I have here, I have uh, what? 3h over h. Oh, the h h can cancel. So what I got here? So I got a threes here. So, so this one will tell us say, hey, a can be any numbers, right? So what happens here? So that's why you said, okay. So what a conclusion you can make here because this is a linear function. So the rate of the change is always the same. Right, so it's kind of like the linear function, like, a, so if we take a look here, the linear function is something like this, right? So the linear function is something like this, right? So the second line is really is just itself, right? So it doesn't matter where you take two points, the rate of change is always the same, it's the slope of that line. So what we can conclude here, very important conclusions here, right? So we say the linear functions, Okay, have constant rate of change. That means uh, they have the same number of rate of the change. That's what we call it. it's a constant. Right? So like in here is a three. That means uh, the line, this line is here, the rate of the change is equal to the slope of the line. So I know the slope of the line for any two points on this line, they have the same slope here, right? So that's why we come out with the one good conclusion, the rate of the change is the, if it's a linear function, then the, you know, the rate of change is a constant, right? So that means a fixed number. What are the other conclusion we have? We say, if a function is increasing, then what happens here, we have a positive average rate of change. If a function is decreasing, then we have a negative average rate of change, right? That's it, okay? So that is about uh, 
uh, this section, the average rate of the changes here. Okay, so the and it's an easy section and it's nice to talk to you and uh, you know looking forward to talk to you in our next uh, sections here. Okay, so bye. You have a good days. Okay, bye bye.